praised. And I do know without him we can do nothing. That is so for sure. You know, we see so much going on in this world. And, and to most people, they just go along with their regular routine and, and live as they've lived. But if we're watching and if we're waiting for the Lord, these events that are unfolding before our eyes tell us that the Lord is coming and that we need to have our hearts prepared and and set ready to be found at his right hand. So praise the Lord. We are really blessed to know the Lord. There's so many people without a clue that don't know God and, and just walk in darkness and I don't know what that would be like. It's it's it just seems like it'd be just dreadful not to have that purpose that the Holy Ghost gives us and that direction that we find in God's word and that prompting of the Spirit and, and then just to know what his promises declare. I just we, we are so blessed. Amen. Well, last week we did talk about the second coming of Jesus, and, and I did want to continue this. I, I did want to go into some of the signs and some of the background of, of some of these events. I, I know to some of us it's pretty familiar material in a lot of ways, but... Um, you know, God's word is always new. He does renew it in our hearts and uh, give us new insights. And I don't think God's word ever gets old. It, it's always something new that we can discover in it and, and new places we can go. And and I'm just so thankful that we have this privilege. Praise the Lord. I know last week when I began, I, I, I gave us some premise here for the, the promise of his return. It was so significant that the Lord, before he ascended, and even while he was on earth, made it clear that... Um, you know, he knew he wasn't going to be on earth forever. I think that was very hard for his followers to, to realize. He would tell them, you know, that he was going to die and give his life. And, you know, I think they just couldn't really understand it at those moments. It would be later, of course, when all of his words would come to life and, and they would realize truly what he had said. But, you know, he gave them some wonderful insights. And, and he knew he couldn't be with them forever, but he said he would send the comforter, which, how precious is that? You know, that he would return to them by sending the Holy Ghost, his spirit. But just beginning here, I'd just like to just go over John 14 a minute here. Just briefly here, just uh, paving the way again. I, I know my husband liked to backtrack before he continued, and, and I, I think... That can be helpful. So anyway, just looking at that 14th chapter of John, again, it's this is familiar scripture. We hear it often. Maybe many of us have memorized it, but it's still so dear. No matter if we've heard it a thousand times, it's still so dear. It, it doesn't get old in our hearts. So chapter 14, verse 1 reads, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I, have told, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. So here he's telling them that he's going to prepare a place for them. It, it wasn't uh, going to be here on earth, but wherever he would go, that's where he would prepare those places for his people. And, and verse 3 here says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. So again, he's, he's not only going to prepare a place for those that love him, but he's going to come again and receive them unto them himself. And for what reason? That where I am, there you may be also. I know I talked a bit about... Um, the restoration a bit last week and the, the times of restitution that would come from the presence of the Lord. And as I was reading this, I realized this verse also points in that direction. I, I know I mentioned that Adam and Eve had lost that fellowship with the Lord when they sinned and were uh, taken out of the Garden of Eden. And um, I talked about how they hoped for a restoration, how, you know, every woman 
son. I, I suppose that had faith in God at all, hoped that she would be the one that would bring forth a promised child. And even, even Eve said that she had received a son from the Lord when her first son Cain was born. And, and I think that hope was just burning in her heart that, you know, maybe that restoration could be made. But, you know, we know that a lot of time has gone by. And, of course, Jesus did come again. And he, or, he, or he did come in the flesh, let's put it that way. And, it, and he is going to come again in the flesh. But here in this third verse of chapter 14 of John, he, he's talking about that type of restoration again, that where I am, there he may be also, because Adam and Eve had lost that fellowship that they at first had with God, that fellowship when he would walk with them in the cool of the evening. So how very precious that there would come a time in a place when it would again be that wherever God is, there his people would be. And verse 4 says, and whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. So praise the Lord, that was very prompt, very precious, one of those wonderful, significant things that Jesus promised and told his, his followers. And of course, we know that before he ascended, he gave them precious promises. He told them exactly what to do before he left them. And then, of course, we know they watched as he was taken out of their sight, as the clouds received them, received him rather. And, you know, I, I just can't imagine, you know, what their thoughts were exactly. But, you know, I... It must have been really something. I'm sure they didn't want to see him go. They'd enjoyed those wonderful 40 days with him after his resurrection when he spoke of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and taught them the things that they needed to know. But, you know, it was needful that he go. He said, if I don't go, then the Holy Ghost won't come. He called it the comforter. It, it, he said it was expedient that he, that he go so that the comforter would come. But here... They did watch him go, and of course we know that um, after he left, you know, the clouds covered him up as he was going up, and, and they're looking steadfastly toward heaven, and then those two men in white apparel appeared, and they said, in, in the 11th verse of Acts 1, they said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So here they have that very precious promise that Jesus, although he had then been, been taken from their sight, that he would come in the same manner that he left, he would return. So they had that very precious promise and you know what? We're still clinging to it today. It's still the same. You know, the years have gone by and time has passed, but yet those that believe in Jesus are, are looking for that promise, that return, when he'll come again and, and we'll see him. Just as he disappeared, at one point he will return. So praise the Lord. And then, so that tells us how he will return. And then, of course, there are verses that tell us why he will return. And in and, and, and Acts, the second chapter, Jesus was quoting from the Psalms, Psalms 110, I believe. And um, he was saying that, um, he was quoting from what David had said. Uh, if you look at um, the 34th verse, for David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. So the heavens were to receive Jesus until that final point would come when all the enemies of God would be made his footstool. In other words, conquered. So praise the Lord. That's when he's coming again at that point, at that appointed time when he returns. And uh, also in Acts 3, it tells us that uh, the times of refreshing would come from the presence of the Lord and he would send Jesus Christ. And again, whom the heavens must receive until time of restitution of all things. So praise the Lord when it's time, when it's at that point when everything that needs to happen to fulfill the scripture has happened, then Jesus will return. And praise the Lord. We, we just want to be ready for that moment, you know, whether
whether or not we've gone on to be with the Lord or whether we're waiting here on earth. We just want to have that condition in our heart that is right with him so he could receive us and, and we can be on that right hand. So praise the Lord. God is good. Let's, let's just continue the study by just looking at some of the signs that um, he said that we were to watch for. If we turn to 2 Thessalonians, we have a good portion of scripture here that tells us really quite a bit. And um, this is 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, and um, it begins in the first verse by saying, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. So here he is talking about the coming of the Lord Jesus, and at that point are gathering together with him, because it's together, isn't it? When he comes, his people are going to be gathered. We, we know the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So praise the Lord. This is, this is what I believe is being spoken of here. And, and uh, Paul wanted to make it clear that we wouldn't be easily shaken. You know, a lot of things can happen to shake our faith. That's one of the jobs of the devil, to try to destroy us. I mean, he knows. He's already doomed and, and he's, you know, he knows what his destination is, but his goal, I do believe, is to take as many people with him as he can. So he tries to upset us. He tries to cause, cause disruptions and, and he'll send all kinds of things to confuse God's people and, and to uh, make them wonder and, and uh, shake them up so maybe their faith isn't strong and, you know, maybe they'll uh, go out and not serve the Lord anymore, but God would not have us to be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as it could be. And he said, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Now, this is, um, he's, he's stating a, a very um, well-known detail at that point that the day of Christ was at hand. Uh, in other words, it's imminent. And it, it means that it could occur at any point. It's impending. It's to be expected. And, um, you know, he's going to go on to tell us that something that must happen first. But the early church, I believe they were looking for the return of Jesus. You know, I, th that hope was in their heart. And I think that's true. It's, it's, it's the wicked man that says, my Lord delayeth his coming. It, it's, it's, it's the man that doesn't have faith and, and, and is disobedient that has that outlook that puts the coming of the Lord off. But we who are in Christ and living for him, we're expecting his return. You know, we know he's coming in. And yes, maybe there are a few things that we think will happen first. But, you know, all of these things, I believe, will happen rapidly anyway. As, and so much is, is already in the making and, and developing and, and, you know, in the makes right now. So surely it, it just wouldn't take much at all. You know, I, I do remember, I don't know, maybe it was a year ago or something. I, I just, I guess I was thinking about the Lord and, and all at once I thought I heard a trumpet. You know, it was, it was just like I could really hear that trumpet in my heart or, I don't know, it was pretty audible it seemed. And I thought, Lord, are you coming? You know, and you know, it's going to be like that. I, I think a lot of people put it way off and think it's going to be years and years. I mean, have you ever talked to anybody who, you know, you tell them that the Lord is coming and, and they say, yeah, yeah, maybe in a hundred years, you know. You ever heard that? I, I, I've spoken to a few people and, and that's been their, 